Hello my lovelies! Today I really wanted to answer some of your questions. There were a lot of questions that were also repeating so if I didn't answer to your question maybe go and look at some of my other questions and answers videos from before which I will link below. To start off I'm gonna go to Snapchat because I've opened my Snapchat so you guys can ask me a lot of questions so if I'm looking down it's because I'm trying to look at my phone and reply to your questions. What is your biggest achievement in fear is question number one. I think that my biggest achievements been that I'm quite an independent person, that I make my own money and I stand on my two feet and that I do not depend on anyone. That's just what I always aim for. And regarding the biggest fear, I think my biggest fear would be not being close to my family or sort of not being able to hear from them in a while or being very far away from them. So that's something that I would not like ever to happen in my life. Next question is, do you love Croatia? Uh, while I was growing up, every summer I would spend in Croatia, uh, mainly like with my grandparents and my sister going to Dubrovnik. And I have some amazing, amazing memories from there, which is why I absolutely love Croatia. Next question is, What's your favorite perfume? Do a perfume collection video, please. If you guys want to see a perfume collection video, maybe leave a comment below. My favorite perfume is a very difficult question because I have a lot of perfumes and I couldn't really say which one's my favorite. I'd say my all-time favorite one that I come back to is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue as well as the pink Chanel Chance. But I currently am loving a combination of two which I wear together. So I'm talking about two Jo Malone. I've got the mini ones so I just always put them in my bag and I've got the Nectarine and Blossom Honey and then peony and blush suede. I mix these two and they smell very summery, very sweet and fresh, but I don't know what it is. I just love wearing these two together and they always put me in a good mood. Sometimes I even spray it around the home because it just makes me feel good. Next on Snapchat. If you had one million pounds in cash and one hour to spend it, where would you go and what would you buy? I would probably, because it's only one hour, it's not even enough, you know, to go to Chanel and just buy like so much stuff. I would probably just buy a house because that's at least money well spent and then when I have more time I could sell the house and think better what I'd do with the money so I'd like redistribute it. Yeah, I'd definitely buy a house and then resell it and then see how I want to spend the money. <laughs> what is your best skincare tip when you're flying? I would say uh, keep moisturized, just use good oils or a facial mask. If it's like a long uh, whole flight, make sure to remove your makeup and then to hydrate your skin, to quench it. Maybe if you're lazy to do that, bring one of those sprays that you can just spray all over your skin throughout the flight. That really helps me. I love the Kiehl's cactus spray I think it's called and also the Shiseido Kabuki spray those are really great I'll try and link them below I hope you can't hear that noise outside I don't know what it is but it's very annoying which air company do you use to fly uh, to America and which one do you think is the safest to flying over the ocean In regards to flying safe I think they're all equally safe really I usually use obviously I fly from London so I mainly use British Airways American Airlines kind of like same thing then often would fly with Delta if there's no other choice but it's not my favorite company because I like I had like a few issues with their customer service in the past but if I could choose any I would always go for British Airways I love uh, United United is so good for flying their planes are just great and I always recommend them what is your ethnicity I've only recently just started following you and you're stunning as is your work hope you answered the question lots of love lots of love to you too Saima um, I've answered to this question before but it is still quite heavily asked so I'll get back to that I'm originally Serbian and um, I live in England now so that is probably where the confusion comes from <laughs> okay I think that's it with snapchat if you're not following my snapchat account make sure to go and follow it the username will be in the description box below let's get on to Twitter on Twitter I always reply to all of your questions like straight away when you ask me I feel like it's one of those social media networks where it's just so easy to reply reply to all of you and if you ever have any questions I think the best place to ask me would be Twitter because I can immediately get back to you. The worst place to ask me anything would be Instagram direct messages because I never look at Instagram direct messages. What is one thing you can't live without eating? Love you. Love you too Isabel. Ooh, one thing I can't live without eating. I'm quite a foodie. I love avocado. I think one thing that I can't live without would be avocado. I love avocado salads. Um, that's just my weakness I guess. <laughs> my friend Susie 
at Hello October asked, how are you such goals? Susie, you are goals. You're like friends goals, literally. I love you. I always find Instagram questions so much fun and I often reply to all of your questions. So again, if you have any questions, you can always ask me as well under the pictures on my Instagram account. It's very easy to find me. It's just at Tamara. So go and check it out. First question on Instagram is, how do you keep yourself motivated and organized? That's a good question. Just like everyone else, I have my good days and my bad days. Bad days when I'm very poorly organized and usually they come hand in hand. So if I'm poorly organized, I'm also like really not motivated. But if I'm kind of, kind of like feeling like, oh no, I'm really, really, really not motivated to work now, then I try and organize my space, organize my tasks, put everything on a piece of paper and that motivates me to work more. So I feel like it's very hand in hand thing. You need to be organized in order to stay motivated. What places would you like to visit? I would really, really love to visit Far East. So I'd love to go to China, Hong Kong, Japan. Those are like three places that I would definitely really, really love to see. They're so high up on my list and places that I'm kind of like dreaming about, especially since actually like both my father and my mother spent quite a bit of time in China when they were my age really, because uh, my father was doing his masters in China at the time and my mom was accompanying him. So I'd like to see it for myself. What is your favorite Starbucks drink? I'm very boring. I always order a medium soy latte. It's just something I like. If I'm pretty cranky in the morning, I go for the large one, venti. And I just love soy milk. I feel like it adds something little to the drink, especially in the US, guys. In US, soy milk is kind of like vanilla flavored, so it's delicious. How long did it take for your blog Instagram to grow? Well, I've been blogging for like six years at least, so I would say quite a while. I have so many ideas of things that I would like to do. I think I've had my Instagram for maybe like three or four years, so I'm now on 300 and something thousand followers. Basically, like it took like three, four years to grow to that number. Can you film a video makeup desk tour or post a picture? I can definitely film a tour of my vanity situation. I would love to do that. So if you guys are interested, do leave a comment below. Is there anything you don't like when it comes to being a blogger? I wouldn't say there's anything I don't like myself with being a blogger, but I sometimes get quite sad when I hear that there's a lot of competition between bloggers. I often discuss this with my friends. Like, I'm not a very understanding person when it comes to competitiveness. I don't really like this whole, like, who has what and who's done, done what, because I have, myself, a very supportive network of friends. So my closest friends are bloggers and we always discuss what work we're doing. We always share, like, contacts, we share tips, we shoot each other, we help each other. We're always there for each other and there's, I would say I have like eight good friends that I can speak to about blogging and they do the same thing and they're not competitive at all. There wouldn't be like, if I tell them like, oh, I'm working on this job, they wouldn't just run and steal the job. So I think it's quite sad when I hear from other people that their friends are like this. Also, um, I recently met a blogger who told me that in her environment, it's so competitive that she can't share anything with anyone, that she can't have any blogger friends. And that makes me really sad. I think that's something I wouldn't like to be around me. At the same time, I feel like you always attract what you are. So if you're open and if you want to help other people, you will meet people that also want to help you and support you. Another thing that I don't like in blogging is this whole like who's copying who and like who bought it first kind of thing. I've been doing fashion blogging, like serious fashion blogging since like 2010. And I have never thought, like even when I would be like the first person to buy something, I would never think like, oh, this person is so copying me because they bought the same thing. Like my job is to influence people to buy things and to be an influencer. So to be like, I love this, you will also love it, buy it. And I would never think like, oh, this blogger is copying me because they bought the same thing. That is so annoying. I don't really care. Everyone can have St. Valentino Rockstead shoes and everyone has St. Valentino Rockstead shoes. I would never think like, oh, you're copying me because you bought the same because I just don't care. Next question is very interesting. It's, did you feel homesick when you moved to England? If yes, how did you deal with it? I never actually felt homesick. Don't tell my mom because it might upset her a little bit. But I am that kind of person. You can just throw me in any kind of situation and I deal with it. I am the sort of person that always thinks the best out of the situation and I'm like that with everything, with like moving places, with big life changes, with like breakups, with uh, new jobs. I always try to adapt to the new situation and kind of am like, that's the past, this is current. It's just how my personality is. But I did have a period, like maybe when I hit the two month period, 
that I started feeling like, wait, this is really unfair. All of my girlfriends at home are like clubbing and partying like I never existed, like they don't even miss me, they don't even reply to my text messages anymore or like my emails. This is so unfair. Like, why are they not like missing me a little bit more? It's like just those kind of like things that you would be wondering if you're like 18. Um, but it didn't really last that long. I had my sister already in UK who's my best friend so that helped a lot and I guess England was so exciting. I always wanted to move to England because I wanted to experience a challenge and do something new so no I didn't really feel homesick. If you can change one thing about yourself what would you change? I would like to be a bit less emotional. I'm quite an emotional person. I always try and put myself in other person's shoes so if people are like judging someone for being whatever I'm always like oh like but guys, you know, hold on a second, I kind of feel sorry for this person, this is not fair, I always feel sorry for people. Even if it's like a, like a bad character in a movie, in the end when they get punished, I always feel sorry for them because I'm like, but no one deserves to have like bad times, even if you're really bad, I don't want you to have bad times. So I wouldn't like to feel so sorry for everyone and I also wouldn't like to be so emotional. I'm a very loving person, I very much open up to people and I like having close relationships with people and maybe it's a problem because I live in an environment where people are quite cold so I don't know if that's quite beneficial for me to be so emotional. What is your favorite lipstick? Guys this is such a difficult question because I don't have a favorite lipstick. I have so many favorite nude lipsticks usually kind of colors like this but what's on my lips lately a lot would be the MAC etc lip pencil then I overdraw my lips a little bit and I use the YSL Rouge Lip Shine in color 44 is this beautiful kind of like flash color lip stick which I'm wearing right now. What is your favorite shop in the world? Luxury or High Street? Hmm. If it would have to be High Street I love shopping on ASOS because A it has so many different brands that um, I love and B because there's like thousands of products so you can always find something on ASOS and if it's luxury Currently it's Gucci, in general it's Chanel. What is your favorite eye cream? This is a question you guys ask me all the time and it would definitely have to be the Galan Arche Imperial. Beautiful creamy moisturizing eye cream and I apply it usually at night but also in the morning if I feel like my skin really needs it. And it's just beautifully packed, it's a beautiful product and really does wonders for my eyes. How do you stay in shape when you're traveling? I can't really tell you what I do. I don't really have a routine. I try to work out as much as I can like by going to the gym when I'm at home. But when I'm traveling I usually walk a lot. Like sometimes when I go to New York or Barcelona I would spend like every day walking like 12 kilometers per day. 12 to 16 at least. So I don't know if this helps. There's no diet or anything that I'm following. I'm just listening to what my body is asking for. What is your favorite part of London and why? I love walking along the Sloan Street. I just love all the shops along there. And if I'm walking from like King's Road towards Harrods, I really, really love that end of London for like shopping. And then you can find cute restaurants around Knightsbridge area. So I love Knightsbridge. How many languages do you speak and which? I speak Serbian. English, I guess, and I speak Spanish. Did you go to university and if so, what did you study? I reply to this question so many times, but I, I'll just say because it it's a quick one. I studied pharmacy at university alongside Spanish, so I have a master's in pharmacy and a Spanish diploma. What is your favorite color and the one color that you wouldn't wear? My absolute favorite color at the moment would be light blue. Anything pastel I'm dying for. I also love really light gray. Uh, one color that I'm not so keen on is mustard, I think. That mustard yellow color I don't really like. Do you feel that you are connected with Serbian culture and if Serbian culture has in any way influenced your style? I wouldn't think that it's currently at all influencing my style because Serbian kind of like fashion style is now totally different to my style. They would all probably say that I'm dressing like a grandma. I am kind of more now like Western Europe fashion style oriented. But when it comes to culture, I think I'm absolutely influenced by Serbian culture in every way. I love home. I'm very proud of where I come from. In general, when people ask me, I always say like, kind of like Balkans area because I have cousins in Croatia, in Slovenia, in Bosnia, in Serbia. So I'm very much like in that sense spread all over Balkans. And I, I just, I love the culture. I love the warmth of people, the closeness of the families the friendships that you have there are just like very strong, very firm 
and you have people that you can always rely on. I'm much more positive than I would say like an average Serbian person in terms of way of thinking. I'm definitely connected to the mentality and the culture. A biggest mistake in life you have done. I wouldn't be able to kind of tell you just one thing like this was such a big mistake in my life, but I can tell you that in general, every time that I step away from who I really am and I don't listen to my heart and I'm not behaving like myself, it's always a mistake so in the past whenever i would like meet new friends or like start relationships with guys whenever i'm kind of being like unsure about a person but kind of not listening to that inner voice and just being like no and they're actually quite nice i enjoy spending time with them this is actually really nice it's fine it's fine and when i'm brushing off that inner feeling it always ends up being a mistake I've recently been watching a, like a lot of um, Sex and the City, like when I'm while I'm like tidying home and stuff, and I watched the season six when Carrie meets the Russian and she gets into this like his lifestyle and completely, completely loses who she is because she's kind of like living like adapting to his lifestyle and realizing that she's not meet, like he's not really meeting her needs and like standards. But she's kind of brushing that off i feel like that's always a mistake that i do in life like with friends whenever i'm like oh no but she's nice but she's not really and like i know that she's not really nice but i'm still like but no she needs me and like oh but she doesn't have anyone else and it's usually a mistake and those are kind of mistakes i made in life with guys with girls with everything so yeah do you want to have kids is the next question i definitely want to have kids at least three hopefully i would love to be a mother not right now but um i love babies i never even knew that i would love babies until my sister had one and that's when i realized how much i love him like i cannot even describe it's like like the biggest love of my life so i definitely want to have at least three of those exactly the same babies like my nephew is hopefully one would be a girl at least so yeah what are your three desert island beauty pics now if i'd go on a desert island i guess i wouldn't need much makeup because no one else would be there right think so so i would just like to be very comfortable moisturized and like not like get dry from like sea salt or sand which is why i picked my number one prime de rose by dior this beauty this lip balm is just the best thing ever and it always keeps my lips so smooth plump and it looks really beautiful on your lips so it's kind of almost like two in one product and i just love it so much it really helps with dry lips then for my face i would bring la mer the renewal oil because obviously all the sun and again like sand and dryness this really helps me keep my skin moisturized and renews it every day from like all the bad stuff so i would love to have this along and the third thing to keep my hair in place from all the frizz and kind of dryness i would love to bring the kerastase elixir ultimate oil because this really helps my hair um become manageable because it's really 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 not disciplined hair and it's really unruly so and this smells so wonderful i could use it all over my skin just to be like so moisturized and love it <laughs> does your boyfriend speak serbian no he doesn't at all and how old were you when you opened the blog i think i was 20 yeah and I had a blog when I was 16 as well, but it was more like a teenage diary. So I always really liked writing, I guess. When are you planning on having children? This is a really funny question because when I was in university, I kept saying, as soon as I graduate, I want to have babies immediately. So I guess I graduated at like 22. Yeah. And I was like, no way I'm having babies now. And then I was like, but when I'm 26, I'll have babies. I'll for sure have babies when I'm 26 and I'm 27 now. And I'm like, maybe when I'm 30, but now knowing my previous record of like promising, I don't even know. I guess I'll just have to wait and see when it happens. But I love babies and I definitely want to have them. But maybe when I'm 30, because I'm very immature. What is your favorite lipstick foundation? Lipstick I've replied and I think foundation at the moment, I just really love NARS, uh, what is this called? All Day Luminous Weightless Foundation and mine is in color Santa Fe. I rave about this all the time and you can see how I apply it in my summer morning routine video. Top style trend at the moment of the shoulder tops and chokers or like bandanas. I love just mixing the two, that's the best. What was the best day of your life? I think the best day of my life was when I met my nephew for the first time. Like. I my sister gave birth while I was at London Fashion Week and it was kind of unexpected so when she was giving birth I was 
I was in London and the next day I went straight back as soon as they could leave the hospital and I just I'll never forget the moment it's like it makes me so emotional when I remember like coming to see them and I went to hospital and she was like she was there looking really tired and really exhausted but kind of happy at the same time and you could see this glow and then there was this like tiniest little head you could imagine poking out of this little like maxi cozy thing which is basically like a little basket and I just I was just like oh my god is that him like I can't believe it and I was just like very I guess it was a very emotional moment for me and it was like one of those moments that I don't think I'll ever forget in my life just seeing him and then we had to drive home and he was um, sitting on the back seat like right like you see I told you I'm such a freaking emotional person I don't know why I'm just so emotional I wish I could I wouldn't be so anyway um, we were driving back home from the hospital and I just kept staring at him and thinking like oh my god like this is like a new addition to my family like I love this child so much from like the moment I laid my eyes on him and then he grabbed my finger like with his tiny little hand he grabbed my finger and I took a picture of it and it was like I don't know I just that was like the most amazing day of my life for sure it was very emotional what is your favorite place your boyfriend showed you or taken you to it depends which boyfriend if we're talking about current one I would probably say the best thing he's ever shown me was a glowing Eiffel Tower on our first date in Paris that was pretty nice because he um, we were like walking along the Champs-Élysées and he was like oh I really want to show you something and it was kind of like a surprise so we were on this balcony and then he kind of timed it well so all of a sudden the Eiffel Tower started like glowing and it was just beautiful and it was our first date so it was pretty romantic because he kind of planned it really well but yeah it was really amazing it was one of the two best dates I've ever been in my life another great thing that I've seen like on a first date would have been um, Arsenal Barcelona game I just well I'm a football fan and I love Arsenal and it was quite fun watching like Arsenal Barcelona because it was like Champions League game it was very unexpected and it was also on my first date with my ex-boyfriend and I thought that was quite like an interesting thing because I was like part of this whole atmosphere and it was a bit like something like in a movie Gucci or Chanel which one would you choose between the two currently Gucci all-time Chanel are you a religious person I am a Christian I believe in God and um, that's pretty much about it I, I don't know what it means to be a very religious person I guess it means to have faith and I, I definitely have faith my question is how to grow blog traffic your tips and advice for new bloggers I actually wrote several blog posts on my blog theglamandglitter.com about how to grow traffic how to develop a blog from like scratch and stuff like that so definitely go and check those out next question is do you plan to learn German because of your boyfriend my boyfriend is German I'm Hungarian and we're living in Switzerland I must learn German now because I can't communicate good here without speaking the language I actually did a bit of German in high school like four years of it and a lot of my friends are German when they speak in German I can kind of understand them but Swiss German is really another story and to be honest at first I really wanted to learn I remember like having this conversation with one of my guy friends like two and a half years ago and I was like I would really like to learn German and he is German and he was like, why would you want to learn German right now? And I was just like, I don't really know, but I just feel like maybe I would like to learn it just for myself. How to save money to buy luxury purchases? I think like, obviously like you kind of have to prioritize what you want to spend your money on. So that's one way. If you have one thing that you really know you want to buy, just make sure that you're focused on that. But I recycle a lot of my stuff. So on my Depop account, I sell like a lot of stuff that I haven't that I like I don't really wear anymore currently I'm selling a lot of stuff like Celine bag and a Gucci bag and a Valentino bag so check it out I'll leave the link below I do sell there a lot of stuff so if you're interested to check it out go and have a look and you can buy some of my stuff next question is what is your favorite nail polish I pretty much all the time wear OPI sweetheart turn me super to or be there in a prosecco in the video your summer morning routine you said you love to listen to music with breakfast what kind of music do you listen to let's see what my iTunes says okay I'll just like show you a few things that I've got you used to, you used to. then I love this. I 
Someone's asking, um, which are your favorite books, the ones you can read all over again? Um, Picture of Dorian Gray is my absolute all-time favorite book. It's by Oscar Wilde and I recommend everyone read it. What are the top items on your luxury wish list? I would say a Louis Vuitton Petit Mal bag, um, a Fendi Picabou, there's an ice cream van passing by, that's not on my wish list. Um, few Gucci bags as well. Dear Tamara, would you consider yourself feminist and why? Why not? Hugs and kisses, love you. Love you too. Um, I always used to think that I'm a feminist as I feel very strongly towards like women's rights. At the same time, I still feel that men shouldn't forget that women being feminist doesn't mean that they shouldn't be gentlemanly. So, even though I feel and I strongly believe that I'm a feminist and I believe in equality between genders and I believe that women are extremely incredible and powerful creatures, I feel that men still shouldn't forget that even though we're fighting for our rights, we still want the door opened in a restaurant or they should really pay the bit for the bill after the first date because it's just like a gentlemanly thing to do. I wouldn't want to be taken to the most expensive restaurant or anything like that. He can take me to like Pizza Hut but I would expect the guy to kind of not ask me for like six pounds to pay for the bill. So yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> this was so much talking so I'm so excited to kind of shut up for the rest of the day. Thank you so much for watching and please ask me if you have any more questions because I would like to make this thing kind of like monthly. I always reply to all of your questions pretty much so do leave any other questions if you have below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!